Welcome back to Switch to Linux, and today we're going to return to an old video series we used to do, Distro Wars, and we're going to be looking at Peppermint versus MX Linux. Now, why haven't I done Distro Wars in a while? Well, a lot of it comes down to bandwidth. It's hard enough for me to download one distribution and install it and test it on a virtual box, let alone two on a very limited bandwidth. When I get a chance to swing by coffee shops and I can download more distros using their internet, yeah, I can probably do a few more of them. But, sorry, you'll just have to deal with the fact that uh, we don't do them all the time. I wanted, though, to do Peppermint versus MX Linux because the brand new version of Peppermint came out and it is also based on Debian. So, both MX Linux and Peppermint are now based on Debian. They both use XFCE as a desktop uh, environment. I'm not sure if... Elec or if um, Peppermint used to use a hybrid between XFCE and LXDE and things like that. I'm not sure where they're at in that scope right now. I just forgot to look into it last time. Uh, but we're going to have a look at both these distributions because both of them have been distributions I have run on my microscale computers. Uh, both of them are distributions that I have used extensively in production in the past. And so I want to see which one of these is the better distribution because they both have been good. Of course, in the past, Peppermint was based on Ubuntu. And we have to consider that. But with some distributions uh, properly moving away from Ubuntu, then they went back a step and based themselves on Debian instead. This has been uh, uh, hit the market with uh, mixed reviews. Some people really like it, particularly the fact that they are abandoning Ubuntu. Other people have criticized it deeply uh, because it wasn't quite as good as previous versions are. In fact, even in mine, I said, yeah, it kind of lacks a lot of polish when I did the full review of it. So with that, we're going to go ahead and jump right on into Peppermint and have a look at what it looks like. So here we are, and uh, these are all installed on identical virtual machines using uh, VirtualBox 6, uh, whatever the current default version is in Linux Mint 20. I don't know if I'm on 20.2 or 20.3 on this. I think I'm on 20.2. Um, and so when you first boot up Peppermint, we do have a welcome screen and Peppermint does not come with a default web browser. This is kind of good. Some distributions use Chromium, some distributions use um, Firefox, but no web browser is perfect. And so it's really good that Peppermint team gives you the ability to right out of the box, just choose your web browser. Now, if you're like, uh, you were expecting a web browser out of the box, it doesn't have it. You might be a little bit uh, disillusioned by that, but you can actually choose from a number of different options. We have Firefox, Conqueror, Gnome, Falcon, Tor Browser, Midori, Cute Browser, um, uh, Lua Kit, I've never seen Lua Kit, and uh, Chromium. And there probably are some other things uh, as well you could install, but these are the quick common ones. We also have a series of software packages. So we selected to install a web browser and we get a full software package. Uh, so that could be confusing for some people. And you'll notice that uh, with these, there is, um, it's just a random mishmash of extra stuff. We do have peppermint extras. We have extra themes. We have icons. We have wallpapers. Um, and then we have an ICE tutorial. Learn how to use the ICE applications. Of course, ICE is your uh, containerized web app switch kind of was created by the Peppermint team originally. That is a uh, fork of that is now in Linux Mint versions as well. And we have Pep Hub, so make system changes and customizations. So let's have a look at this. So inside of here, we have uh, some of the basic settings, users and groups, accessibility, basic settings, appearance, panels, notifications, default applications. We have some hardware tools, and then we have system and software. So inside of your system and software, this is going to be something unique to Peppermint. So this guy here... Uh, just relaunches what we already saw earlier, web browsers and other software. We have system information if you happen to need that information. And then we have an update manager. Now, you'll notice that a lot of these tools here, 
they're just launching a terminal. This is something that if you're looking for something user friendly, this isn't going to be the best thing for you. We have a Snap Store, we have Flat Hub, Gnome Store, and the App Image Hub. Now, these I criticized earlier in that when you launch these up, it's going to take you to the website for flathub.org, which to your average user is not actually all that helpful. The Gnome Store takes you to a website until the Gnome Store is installed and then that button is going to load up the uh, gnome store and I did re remember I had a difficult time getting flat pack uh, configured to this guy and I think by now I do have it figured out but let's go ahead and have a look at what we see with this so what we see here is let's scroll down you can see we're in uh, the repository version and then over here, we're still in the repository version. So even though I have installed the Flatpak, um, I thought I had added the Flatpak repositories or whatnot. It's still not interacting. So snaps and flat packs and app images, while they have links to them here, they don't actually work right. And this is one of the things that I had said that the Peppermint team needs to work with. Uh, rather than just have simple, like, just buttons to the websites. I think this is useless. So it's a part where the uh, Peppermint seems to lack some polish. Uh, Peppermint does have a updater. When you click on this guy here, you'll see it just launches that terminal again. And so that's okay if you know how to do everything um, <clears throat> in the terminal. But if you're looking for a good user experience, I'll remind you Peppermint used to ship with the Mint uh, package updater, which is one of the best package updaters in Linux. Uh, but no longer now we get the terminal there. Uh, the Peppermint hub is there. And then the other factor to look at is the software. We do have a very minimal uh, suite of software, almost nothing. And Peppermint has always done that. So if you're looking for a good Debian-based system that is completely unbloated out of the box, Peppermint is going to be a good option to go with. So here's your ICE applications we talked about. This is somewhat unique to Peppermint. We have a variety of different web browsers. It works with Chrome, Chromium, Vivaldi, Firefox. These other ones are not uh, accessible because these browsers are not installed. Once I install one of these other browsers, I can choose to go between Vivaldi, Firefox, whatever else. You can choose your application. You can give it a name, give it a website, and then this will tell you where it will appear in the menu. And then if there are any of these here, then you can highlight them and remove them. What I do like that Peppermint did as uh, compared to previous versions is they have removed the links to, uh, they used to link to Microsoft Office 365 web apps, um, which I thought was kind of annoying. And they've gotten rid of that. So that's a positive. So Peppermint overall um, in this new build, it is not the most user friendly. Um, it's, um, this, this, uh, this is the GNOME software store. This is not installed by default. Uh, the only software that you have installed by default is Synaptic Package Manager. So if you want to do that, um, that's where you have that. We, they do have a tool for additional drivers. That is something that is fairly unique. Uh, Debian does not generally have this, so presumably they forked this out of the Ubuntu, so I didn't look into the source of that. But other than that, Peppermint um, in the new version, it is nice and streamlined Debian. It gives you a nice Debian look out of the box. It's not particularly user-friendly anymore. Um, and what happened there is they just wanted to move away from Ubuntu, and I think that that's a positive direction. So this new version of Peppermint does lack polish, but while lacking polish, it does indeed do a good job of giving you a functional system out of the box. It's no longer for the average beginning user. I'll give you that warning, but it is not by any means bad. It is good. It's just not designed for the brand new user to Linux because it's going to open up a lot of terminal boxes. There's no web browser by default. There's no software manager by default other than Synaptic Package Manager, which if you know how to use it is top notch. If you don't know how to use it is confusing as I'll get out. And so with that, there is our thoughts on Peppermint.
Now we're going to go ahead and have a look at MX Linux. And with MX Linux, let's go ahead and land on the desktop over here. We installed this guy and we get it um, we get it out of the box. Now, out of the box, this guy, it does have a better update manager. Now, when you just click it and open it, it's going to open up Synaptic Package Manager. Uh, similar thing to what Peppermint has but if there is actually an update, it's going to give you a separate screen. It's going to turn green on the icon. It's going to give you a notification. You click on this, enter the password, and it's going to tell you everything that needs updated. Okay, the other thing that this has, there's no um, first run, um, uh, first run uh, MX Linux screen, but we do have a lot of tools inside of here. So when you go into your MX tools, this is something unique to this particular distribution. We have a live USB creator, which is really nice. And we have a snapshot, which allows you to take a ISO snapshot of your current running system. So this is really good if you want to do a deployment of an identical operating system across a, a lot of different uh uh, computers. You have the easy ability to do that. We have some basic maintenance. We can do uh, some rescue stuff, boot repairs. We can do cache cleanup, Samba configurations, menu uh, um, editor, boot options. So there's a lot of tools in here that other good mainstream distributions do not have. We have an NVIDIA driver installer for those using NVIDIA to get better installers. And you have codecs over here. I did not remember... Um, if there's codecs installed by default on Peppermint or if you need to manually install them because Debian does not come with them. Uh, but we have a way to install them over here. Uh, we have a variety of other things. You know what? I do take it back. My apologies. We do have a welcome screen. I completely forgot that I must have. Uh, I, I think what happens is when you boot it up, you have to manually toggle this. My, my apologies. I did misspeak at the beginning. There is a startup screen. So you guys had already brought an angry comment. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait a few minutes first. All right. The tools brings us back where we were. The tweak gives you adjustments on your panel. Uh, so by default, of course, the panel is laid out a little bit differently than some people like. You can easily change the panel to where it is with some simple buttons. There's a lot of theming options we have. So it's uh, nice and easy to, to work with. The other thing, though, that we get inside of this um, uh, is we have a app store that's going to be absolutely amazing, uh, way better than we get it with Peppermint, where we can come down here and just select with um, uh, just select by the topic. So if you want to change your desktop environment in this, you can add any of these desktop environments, you know, applications for children. Here's web browsers. You'll notice that this one, we do have Brave also, which is becoming popular. We have Opera, uh, Pale Moon, and Water Fox, although I would avoid using Water Fox at this point in time because of its ties to a big data analytics firm. Um, but we do have a lot of different applications in here, and you can see just pulling down, there's a lot more easy to find applications than uh, Peppermint has. And it goes beyond just that. Now, in addition to that, you can choose your repositories. So these buttons up here at the top are going to give us, um, this is basically all the things you'll find in Synaptic Package Manager. So if you want to, if you know what something is, you can go ahead and look for it there. We also have a test repo, which may not be the most stable, but if you want to test out newer versions of some applications, you can do that. We have Debian backports. Once again, uh, these are the more recent packages which are being tested for the next version of Debian. And out of the box, we actually have flat packs that, that works out of the box. We do have to enter our password again on this one. And it's going to go ahead and download information from the Flat Hub repository. And you can see up here under the remote repo that once this is done downloading, we'll be able to pull that down. Uh, we should be able to add some extra repositories in there as well. But now we can see that we can, uh, from the GUI, whoop, uh, my apologies, I hit that. Uh, that's why I don't use desktop spaces. <laughs> okay. Um, so you can see here that we have uh, all the flat packs available. And if we had more repositories added, we can go ahead and um, pull down which one we we're looking at. We can pull down these guys to see all of the installed, the not installed. Uh, we can see all the runtimes, all available. So there's a lot of extra tools that we have inside MX Linux. 
So there's our tools. We have our documentation in there as well. And then we also have, let's see, we have under software, the uh, if there's something wrong with your signing keys, you can just click on that. This is the repo manager. So if you want to make adjustments to the repositories, this is where you go ahead and uh, make any of those. So this is where we are currently coming from, and you can select whichever ones you'd like to do. Here's the Debian repos, so you can add the non-free, the, the contrib non-free over here. You can basically choose whichever ones you want. And what I'm not seeing in here is the uh, flat packs. So uh, we'd have to look into how to do that. This is the same tool that we were just looking at. Very nice tool there. And if you use an iDevice, you have an iDevice mounter as well. So MX Linux out of the box does come with a lot more tools and everything is in the GUI. So it's going to be a lot more comfortable. It is a little bit more bloated and then it does have a lot more applications installed out of the box. We have some games, we have some graphics, a few different internet applications, and I did not install anything extra. Everything here is everything is going to be uh, built in with this. Here's your MX tools if you're looking for something specific. Office Suite, everything from ebook viewers, PDF arrangement, full Linux suites, and system settings. Uh, we have an ad blocker over here, and Peppermint has an ad blocker as well. I've looked at Peppermint twice now, and I have not found the ad blocker. I'm sure it's. I probably just passed right by it. It's probably inside the Peppermint settings where it used to be, uh, but we do have uh, we do have that option here as well. So out of the box, you'll see that MX Linux is a lot more user friendly. It's a lot more polished. And of course, this is a very mature distribution that has been uh, been used quite a bit over the years. Um, it is not a brand new switch to Debian. So let's see what Peppermint does on the next versions going forward. Are they going to add a little bit more of that polish back? Uh, these are the, the good questions to have. So overall, right now, if you're like, okay, I'm new to Linux, i hearing about all these distributions. If it comes down to one of these two, choose MX Linux. It's going to be better, more user-friendly, probably work better uh, overall. Uh, Peppermint is good if you're already familiar with Linux. You want something that is very streamlined, not having a lot of, uh, a lot of packages pre-built inside of it. You're going to have a, a better experience with that. So these are uh, two good candidate distributions. Neither one of them are bad, but you'll see that based on this, MX Linux is more user friendly with more GUI options. Peppermint is coming along. We have to give it a little bit of grace since it's the first version on Debian. So that let me know what your favorite distribution is out of these two in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.